So let's start with react.js.org. React.js.org is the official React page where you can read all the documentation. And I will also be using Visual Studio Code as my text editor. You will also need to have Node.js installed on your computer. So we can use Node and NPM to develop our application. So after the Node is installed on my computer, I can type node-v to get my node version. It does not really matter if I have 10 and you have the version 12. It does not really contain that much difference between those two node versions. And I can also type npm-v to get my npm version. As I said again, it does not really matter if we have a discrepancy here in the node version. So let's get back to our react.js.org and we can read about React here, but I will be using the create a new React page from react.js.org where I can learn about create React app. Create React app is a command line interface that we will be using in order to create our app. We need to install it first, so npm e or npm install minus g, we will install it globally. And because I install it already, I don't need to relaunch my command prompt. But if you are installing it for the first time, you need to relaunch that terminal after the installation in order to type create react app in your console and use this because it's a command line interface. And then I can type the name of the application that I want to create. This name is just a folder and the general name of our application. Then create react app fires and creates the application for us. After the application is created, we can navigate to our folder and I will launch my Visual Studio code there and we will start from here. So as you can see, we already have a lot of files in this folder. First thing first, we always need to check our package JSON with every front end project always look into package JSON so you have the information about the project. We already see here what scripts we have available and what dependencies are installed. So we have build script, test script, eject script. And by looking inside package JSON, we already know that we can use those scripts. Create React app also installed a few dependencies in our node modules folder like React, React DOM, React script. And those three dependencies right here, we don't really need them. It's just for testing. But right now we can test some available scripts. When running an npm script, it's really important to remember one thing. You always need to type run before you run any of scripts available in package.json. The exception is the start script and the test script, because those two scripts are the exception and you can just type npm start or npm test. Usually with all scripts, you need to type run first. So if, for example, you want to build it, you need to type npm run build in order for it to work. So let's type our start script and fire up our developer server. As we can see, our server is up. It's the React application that we get right off the box. And what you see on the screen comes from this file right here, app.js, where we have some HTML that you see here on the screen. We have some text and we have some text here, HTML tags, HTML form, and we have this big logo right here where we, right here you can see we include image and we also include CSS and the logo is spinning because we have here keyframes. And the CSS is also included in our app.js file. The React application, however, does not start in app.js. We can go one step deeper into index.js. First, let's ignore this service worker line. The line that we need to pay attention to is this react dom .render, where we include the React application that we see using this syntax. We import it and then we have our app right here. We can include our own HTML here and we will write test. Let's see, and we have test rendered. We can also include our app component differently like that and it will be just the same. This syntax right here is just a shorthand. Now to the right, we see some JavaScript functions and we see that it tries to get some HTML element by its ID, by the ID root. Well, the next question is, where is this root coming from? If we open public folder, inside there we can find index.html. Every time we go to some web page, the first thing we get is this index.html. And with React application, it's the same thing. We always get index.html first when we go to React website. Index.html is just basic HTML with some meta tags. What is really important for us is this div right here with the ID of root. Inside this div, 
the whole React application happens. React tries to copy paste its HTML content inside of this div. As you can see here, we try to access this div right here by ID. And if we change the ID from R to B and save it, we get an error because React cannot find its hooking point. React tries to hook to this div. If we change our ID here, React finds it again and it works fine. So let's change it back. We can also try and include our own elements. For example, let's include this div right here. However, it would not work. As you see, I get some squiggly lines. I get some syntax error because React only expects one thing. And what we have here is two different things. What we can do is wrap our two elements inside of one additional div like this. And let's just format it. And as you can see here inside of our HTML, we get the div and two additional div that we have inside our own div. So why does React accept only one div? Well, because React is a tree and it has this kind of form where it renders only one thing at a time. You might say, well, I don't want to clutter my application with additional divs. There is a solution for you. It's called React Fragment. You can use React Fragment to wrap your HTML elements inside of it. Let's do that here. And as you can see in our HTML, what we get in the end is only our two div react fragment is no longer found here because react fragment is just for convenience sake. It allows us to easily wrap our elements inside of it. We don't really want to mess with index.js nor with index.html. We can change our title here. Let's do that. We can change our title to something else. But in reality, our starting point is inside of app.js where we can start our development. Let's delete the HTML that we have here so we can start with the blank slate. As you can see, it renders just fine. Let's delete the import that we are not using. And let's start from here. So let's talk about two important React elements. We have views and we have components. Let's talk about views first. App.js is one view. As you can see, we just return our HTML here. There's nothing more to it. We just return our HTML and, and that is called view. What it basically does, it takes it, this HTML and just copy and pastes it inside of places where we include it, for example, in index.js. And what index.js does, it takes it and it just copies it inside of our HTML. So with views and with index.js, only thing you need to imagine it's basic copy paste and our app.js is just a function with a return statement. It can have some calculations before the return statement where we can calculate stuff. But now what is really relevant for you is that it does basic copy paste. So let's create our own view. So let's first create our proper folder structure where we have assets folder and view folders in the component folder. And let's just start by creating our own view here. We call it a text view and, and let's put it inside of its own directory. And let's start by importing our React dependency. Well, why do we need this React? Is because we want to be able to use HTML inside of JavaScript. Because as you can see, React must be in scope when using JSX. HTML inside of JavaScript is called JSX. Let's create our own function that we will call text view. For now, this function has no parameters. We will just have basic return statement that returns one div. Let's export it and then import it inside of our app.js so we can use it now. A really important part here. We are trying to mix our HTML with our JavaScript code. And the way we can do this inside of our HTML code is by using this syntax right here. React allows us to use something like this. So for example, let's type one plus three. We will get the evaluation of this, which is four. But if I remove those brackets and type it as text, we will get text and no calculations. So it basically executes JavaScript and then makes it copy paste into our index.js. So let's import our function and then we call it. And again, it just copy and pastes. 
then we can provide additional variables inside of our function and include it using our JavaScript syntax. If we pass nothing, we get nothing, and if we pass something, we get something. As said previously, you can do some calculations before your return statement or inside of this statement by using JavaScript syntax in those brackets, but that is just it. Views are stateless things, just a render function. Let's talk about components. Component is something that we want to store our state in. State is essentially a store where we can store our data and modify it if we need to. So if, for example, I will create a button component that will store amount of times that I clicked it, the state will, the state will be something that stores the amount of times I clicked this button. And then I can modify my state and increase my counter. So let's create our new folder here. And it's really important that we begin it with a capital letter because the difference between components and views is also in your code structure. You need to name your components with a capital letter. So, and your views will start with a small letter because in JavaScript, all the classes start with a capital letter. And what we will create is a class and our functions start with a small letter so we can easily distinguish them. The way we create our React component, we create a class. It is also called class component. And then the really important stuff, we extend our class to react.component. So all of our components will be extension of react.component class. And we can also change our writing a little bit. We can import component like this and remove the React part. So our click counter class will always be a part of the component class that we import from React library. And what every class needs is a render function and the render function must have a return statement. So let's write our HTML here and let's export. Now we can import it inside of FJS. And as I said previously, we can use it like this. Now we can see the result. We have our view component and then we have our class component. Let's remove our view component for now. Let's just leave it like that. And now we can start and work on our component. We have a div here and inside of this div, I want to include two items. I want to include button and I want to include a P tag. As we can see here, it renders just the way we wrote it. Now let's start with our constructor. Constructor is a function that is called whenever we create an instance of our class and the constructor is only called once. So in order for our component to have state, we must type this dot state. So what this object is, it just stores our data. And we can store our counter here. State is just basic JavaScript object and we can access it by typing this dot state only because we extend the component class. Let's see what happens. We get an error, a really important error because we cannot use this inside of our constructor without writing super first. Super is the JavaScript syntax that basically allows us to use stuff from our component class that we extend. It is basic JavaScript rules. Without super, we cannot use this dot state. So let's see, we can include our state here by typing this.state.counter. And what we see is counter zero. And if we change it to one and save it, we have counter equals one. So now I want to modify my state by clicking this button. So let's implement on click event. And let's use this syntax right here to include our function. And now when we go to our console, we can see the button is clicked. The console log is executed every time we click this button. And let's put our state back to zero and let's try to modify our state inside of our handle click function. Let's start with something basic. We just modify it directly by typing this state counter plus one, and then we get an error. Cannot read property state of undefined. This error is really important. This error right here is essential because React developers encounter it every day. 
This error happens because our button right here does not know what this is. This refers to our class, but our HTML button does not know where this is coming from. I will log this out and if I click this button you can see the button is clicked and then we get undefined. And this is undefined because we use vanilla JavaScript function. If you use an arrow function for example, and if we include it here, now suddenly when we click the button it finds it and it finds our context. And we can see what we have inside, we have state and we have our counter that is set to 1. Why is that? Why is there a difference between an arrow function and the normal function? Well, it's really important stuff and you can Google it to discover more about this. You can Google arrow functions versus normal functions. And now we can see an explanation. In classic function expressions, the, this keyword is bound to different values based on the context in which it is called. With arrow functions, however, this is lexically bound. It means that it uses this from the code that contains the arrow function. What does it mean? It means that when I use the when I use the arrow function, it automatically binds to my context, to my class, but when I use normal function, it does not do this. With any function at all, I can pass my own context and use it. And then I use the context that I passed. And let's just do handle click here and pass my own context by writing small arrow function that passes my own context into my normal function. Let's change our console log to better understand which function is called. And now when we click our normal function, we can see that it finds the context that we just passed. But this way of doing on-click events is really bad because every time we return something, every time we render something, we create additional functions. Instead, what we can do, we can rebind our function context by writing something like this. The reason that we have two distinctive behaviors of our arrow function and normal functions is that, that the normal function we can bind different contexts and the arrow function is lexically bound. It's really advanced, but just ignore it for now. Remember, if you get an errors, use the bind function. Let's talk something different. We see our counter is increasing, but in our HTML, the counter is still zero, which means that our render function is not called. We can force the re-render by calling this force update. Because right here, we just increase our variable without calling the render again. And by using this dot force update, we call our render again. And now we see our counter is increasing. Now, this is a bad practice. You should never do this. I just did it so I can show you what happens with React, but you should never do your state management like this. What you should do instead is use this dot set state function, which is a function available to us because we extend our component class and set state function expects object from us. And I can say, well, I'm setting a new state for my counter. And by using this set state, I no longer need to force update. And we see it works just fine. And we don't have really any errors because we are using proper syntax. Why we do it with set state and not with force update? You will discover it much later. But for now, force update skips some lifecycle methods and you will understand it by the end of this course. But for now, the proper syntax to modify our state is by using this dot set state. Now, another important thing is that we should never use set state like this because if we will stack it and now we are expecting to increase it twice, it only increases once because React stacks those set states. And what we get here is the direct translation of our state which translates to zero and the zero plus one is one and react stacks those together what we end up with is this the next question is how can i call set state multiple times very simple instead of returning an object i will return a function and the function needs to return our new state as you can see it will not work now it only increases by one because we are still using this dot state, what we can do is use an additional parameter because in this function we receive our state and we can use our state to get the state not at the moment when we create our function, but at the moment of the execution of this function. 
because previously when we did something like this, we get our counter at the moment of creation. We get it at the moment when this is created. So it copy pastes our values. But when we use something from here, well, we can really call it whatever we want. We can call it statey. And right now we will get state at the moment of the execution of this function. And now it should work and the counter increases by two. And you should always set state like this. You should always have a callback. Not like this. This is wrong. You should have it like this. Let's rename it back to state. I always return a JavaScript object. If I have something else in my state, for example, title. And let's render our title right here. Uh, sorry, state. So I have title zero. And in set state, I only need to return stuff that I change. I don't really need to return title again. Only the things I change. And you can also write it the short way. Instead of writing like this, you can use different syntax without a return statement. Now we see it works just fine. And we can also do it like this. And also something really important. Let's test it now. Let's console log. And let's do something after it. Let's see what we get. And what we get is that we have a click function console log. Then handle click is finished. And only after that we get set state is called. Because the set state is asynchronous. And that's why we are using the callback. Because what is executed is this console log. Then the set state is put inside of a synchronous JavaScript loop. Bear that in mind that this is asynchronous. And that is the reason why we could not use the previous syntax where we typed this.state because it is evaluated at the moment and what we have here is asynchronous. And we cannot use this.state because it's false. Let's try doing it multiple of times. And when we do state, it should increase by two. This is how you should set state. And now you know what our class component is, really basic stuff. And also you know what our views are. Views are just copy paste. We start in index.html, we hook to this div, then we go to index.js where the hook process happens. And we also have copy paste from our app component. Control click. And we get our render function inside of our class. You can also return null, it will not break it. And one thing that I forgot, you can also set your classes. It's really important and it's something else that came to my mind. You, you cannot type class because we will get an error. However, it will work, but you will get an error because you should use class name. No errors and it will work. Because we are mixing our HTML with JavaScript, and the class is the reserved word. We use it to create our class. So we really need to use class name. In the next lesson, we will start with a challenge. So let's start with a challenge. We are tasked to create React application that will look like as follows. So we have single page application, which is React. React is a library that allows us to create single page applications and we will use that to display all countries of the world with details of each one based on the public REST API. So we have here an API that we can look up. What an API basically is, it is an endpoint in the backend and we can use that endpoint to communicate with the backend by pushing data to it or getting data from it. So for example, let's use this endpoint right here and as you can see we will get some data you will not however see it like this because i have an extension that formats it nicely called json formatter and this extension displays it nicely for me and you will just get big pile of text and using this api we will make a request we will get data all the countries and then we will need to display it 
So first task is countries list page. Show the flag of each country name, number of inhabitants. The user can sort the list alphabetically and by number of inhabitants. The user can navigate to the detail page of each country. And the second task is the country detail page. So we have country list page and then we have country detail page, two different pages. The requirements do not really matter. So we just read our challenge. And the first thing that comes to my mind, if you remember our discussion about views and components, the first thing is to decide, well, what would be view and what would be component? So I will draw something in Microsoft Paint and it will give you an example of what I am thinking after reading this challenge. So right now I made a little sketch. We start with the country's list page. Where we will have a title. Then we will have some sort of navigation where we can sort stuff. And we will have buttons that sort, that sort the list alphabetically or numerically. These individual boxes will represent each country. And within those boxes we will have flag, the name and the population. And maybe a button that says view more. And each country would be this isolated box. Then we have a load more button that will load more countries. Because I don't want to display 200 countries right off the bat. So first of all we can clearly tell well what is a view. This box right here will be a view. Because I just have an information that I want to project the flag, the name and the population. It will act as a small preview. It does not need to be a component. And the navigation would also be a view because it just have two buttons that are clicked and I can just pass callbacks to those buttons. And title is just an H tag. And load more button is just a button. Well, to manage everything, the country's list page will be a component that will manage state, but those individual things would be views. So basically we will end up with two views, the navigation view, the country view and load more button will be just a button and the title will just will be just an H tag. So we can start from here. So let's delete our old stuff view. And let's delete the imports. Let's start the development server again. Let's create our first view. We call it a country card. The reason that I create the folder for each file because I want to pair it together with a CSS file. And I don't really want to use a CSS right now. So we will convert our application to SAS as CSS. What we will need to do is to install a dependency called Node SAS, and this dependency will allow us to use SCSS. So now the installation is complete, and that means we can convert our project to SCSS. And that means that we can rename our CSS files to SCSS. And let's also rename imports. And now we can create our SCSS file. Oops, sorry I made a mistake. I should call it card and not cards. And now we have our view and our CSS that is paired with that view. And let's start with the view. So as you can see, I wrote a little bit of HTML. And first of all, you might notice that I have something called props. Props is the popular name in React. I could call it whatever name I like, but the props is just a convention. I use it like this because it's much easier to pass a JavaScript object inside of a function instead of passing individual variables such as image source name and population. Let's test our country card. Let's import it. I will use just an image available to me through pixum.photos, which is a random image generator. Right now we have a view, let's check this out. And this is our view. Let's check our HTML. Yeah, this is our card. Now we can style it. And what I like to do is import our CSS in a side of our country card view. Like this, we import our CSS like this. Right now it does nothing. And let's style it a little bit. I don't really want to focus on styling. And, but let's see what we can do with our CSS. 
we can create a new folder. Let's call it styles. And we can create some file that's called general.stss where I can define the general style, for example, for the button. And we will use SAS syntax here to have something like button primary. So this SCSS syntax would translate to something like this. This sign right here is basically copy paste. And let's import our general STSS. We can import it wherever we want to. We can import it in app.stss or in app.js. It is just a personal preference. And I forgot to include my class that I just wrote. And it will be the primary button. So let's style it a little more. So we have our basic view, so we have our general style, and then we have a country card, which is a view. What is important is that we use props. Props is a common name in React, just a convenience here. I could have something like this. But then I need to remember the order in my import that I need to first to pass image and then the name. And using something like this is just easier. I can put it in whatever order I want and it will still work. And now we have our view that we can just put any data that we want and it will just output our HTML. We have also styling here. So now we can start to create something that uses this view. But first we will need to create a component. So let's continue with our project. We have our view here and it's time to create a component. Let's create folder. And let's create it the same way we did with our view. We have a folder, we have a CSS, we have JavaScript. This time we have a class. So we have just basic component with one render function that includes our view. Let's style it a little bit more. So right now let's make state where we store our countries. Right now our list is empty. As mentioned in the challenge, we have an API. So we need to initialize our state by making a request to this API. Let's do that. Let's, by the way, make a config file. Just a JavaScript file. And now I know what my API is. And I can import my config everywhere I want. And let's make some fetch requests that calls our API and then it has a response JSON and then, and after it's done, we have a set state function. Let's call this function right here. And let's see if our state changes. And we have an error. And after I pass my own context, everything is fine. Now we can look inside the data that we get. We have the name, we have the population. Now we can iterate through all the countries by using map function and we can just get the data. And what we get is all the countries. We need to write country that flag because I hard coded the flag. And we get an error because in react, if we do a map function where we iterate through all the objects in our list, we need to assign key to every object. So React can distinguish between each one. So I can just use my React fragment here. I, co I could use another div, but I decided to use React fragment. And now we have no errors. And now we have all the countries. Let's adjust our CSS a little bit. So as we saw here, we get our countries. We get it by using our fetch request where we pass our context. And then when the request is finished, we use set state where we initialize our countries. Everything happens asynchronously. So first few milliseconds, there's actually nothing there to see. And then when we do set state, it re-renders by populating our HTML with, un with new data. Let's do a little bit more styling. Right now we have a nice list of countries. I use Flexbox for that. Right now, the problem is that right now we have all the countries listed in the first page, which is bad. Let's change that by having new variable, which is called visible countries. And then we can define how many countries we see 
at the start exactly. and then let's use our visible countries instead because we will only get 10 countries at the start because I, I'm using the slice. Let's reduce it to six. Now we have six countries that are visible when it's initialized. Now, as you can see, it gets a little bit cluttered with all this JavaScript and HTML mixed together and it only will get worse. So for that reason, let's create another file and we call it countries utils where we just store our functions. Now it works because we have context that we pass and this function is exported and then we import it and use it. And after that we have very clean component where we just have our utils, where we write a lot of logic. So we are done with the initialization. Let's see what we can do with the load more button. Let's initialize our load more button by passing our context and we can include it here. Let's console log it first. Now I get an error because we actually need to do it outside of our constructor. Load more button, nice. And the reason why we do it right here and not in the constructor, because we could just do it right here, but it will be a problem because every render will create additional function and we don't want that. And we just want to do it once at the top. So let's style our button a little bit better. There's our button right here. And there's a little CSS trick for you. If you have an absolute element inside of your container, it will not stay within your container unless you have it position relative. But if I remove it, so if I remove it, my button will go to the next relative element. Just a little CSS trick. If you have absolute elements, it is better to have position relative so it sticks to it. Let's style it a little more. Let's change our view a little bit. Let's wrap our image inside of another div so I can style it better. It's probably not the best looking website, but the only thing we care about is React. Let's style it more. Our component with a little bit of state that stores countries and let's just finish with our button that will load more countries we will load all countries after clicking it by spreading all countries that i have and as you see it works and the button is still here let's fix that Let's fix that by writing little JavaScript logic inside of our HTML. What we have here is a little if statement just that just checks length and if the statement is false our button will be not rendered. And as you can see at the button, the button is gone. Well, we can probably make it by 10 more or by 20 more, but I just want to have a simple button that loads all the countries. We can do it by increasing our countries visible and load number and make it a little bit different. But for now, let's just leave it like that. So for right now, we are finished. We have our component that renders our countries. First of all, we have a fetch request that gets those countries and then sets our state. And now we can continue from here. So let's look at our concept again. 
we already have our views where we load on the countries and then we have our load more button. So let's make a title and a navigation view. So let's make our title first, it can be just h1 tag. And let's fix some CSS in our general styles file. And now let's touch upon another important topic. Right now we have our HTML and our content is as text. You can see load all button and our title is just text written in clear. Which is in my opinion horrible because if we would have long text it will look really bad because we mix HTML with JavaScript logic and we don't have more of the confusion here. Right now with the small text it is okay but with large text or if we have more text it would be really bad. I don't want to see anything that is text right here. So let's create another file. We create countries.json. Where we have just a JSON object that will store our text. And doing things like this will make it easier later to, for example, add a translation. Then we need to import it. By the way, we can import JSON files. React will just transform them in JavaScript objects. And let's replace our text with JavaScript logic. So in my opinion, it looks much better. And as said again, if we have large text, it saves a lot of time. And it also allows us for better text translations in the future and make everything much cleaner. We have a JSON and nothing is hard coded. So we have our title here and now we're missing our navigation view with two buttons. So let's make a view. I call it a country header. And we will do it like this, so we will have an option to maybe do three or four or five buttons where we just map. And what map does is just copy paste with new values from our list. Let's not forget the key. And then let's use it and see how it looks. Oops, I forgot the return statement here. And we will do it right under our title. Now let's see how it would look if I give it data. Let's change it to text. And right now it works. Let's change our button class to something different. Button. Let's style our view differently. And now, well, it works for testing, but I do not really like the fact that we have a lot of text in our render function. Let's outsource them to somewhere else. Let's make some dummy functions here. And then let's just make our functions work. What they do is they basically modify our state by setting the new state. Let's export it and then use it. And let's also provide our context here. Let's import it. So now again, we have an error.
So right now let's implement two functions, sort numerically and sort alphabetically. Those functions will just modify our state and they basically will modify the list of countries that are visible to us. By doing those functions, I will create additional variables that will keep track, okay, if we have our list sorted alphabetically or numerically, and we'll modify those variables where we have our functions that sort numerically or alphabetically. Right here, you can see what additional variables I created. Basic true or false. And then when we sort it, we modify those variables to keep track. Let's export it. And let's import it. And right now it works because it's a just a set state function that just modifies our state. I don't like how this diff is moving. Let's change a little bit of CSS. Now it stays in place. So we have our buttons. And what we basically did, we basically made our view that is called country header that just received two buttons with the text and the callback. And then here we have our buttons with the callback functions. And this is an arrow function so that we can pass a context to our function. And then first of all, we get this all countries and then we sort that list by using JavaScript sort function. If you want to understand how sort function works, I advise you to Google it because here, as you can see, we sort it by population by doing a dot population minus b dot population and this if statement it just decides okay will i sort it from the largest number down or to the smallest number down right now i just do it a quick way just some sort function i sort my list and i set my state and alphabetical sorting works the same way we just sort it by name and not by population as again, this if statement is needed, so we can decide, okay, we will sort from A to Z or from Z to A. And when we sort it alphabetically, um, sorry, I made a mistake here. And when we sort numerically, the numerical sorting variable is then undefined. So it resets numerical sorting, if that makes sense. And now those buttons just work because we set state, we have a new list and this list renders again and we get a new render of this list. So in the next video, we will continue. For now, if you don't understand sort, just Google it. It's a simple JavaScript function. And in the next lesson, we will continue. So in between the last video and this one, I really didn't want to have a lot of HTML in my countries component. So I made a new component called country list, where I just made copy pasted a lot of stuff. Now the props is something that you can do like this. I have data here. I have buttons here. I have countries here. And in my country list component right here at the left, you see that I can access this data by using this.props.buttons, this.props.data, and it's just basic render. I didn't really want to clutter this here with HTML. And then I also created country details component that just receives one country and it's basic render function. It just renders stuff. And now let's see with the console log what I pass exactly to my component. And with the console log, we can see what data I exactly pass to my component. And with country details, you didn't miss a lot. It is just basic bare bones class that renders. It could be view, but it is class because I have plans for it. If it has no data, it renders now. And then if the data is fine, it returns an HTML. So let's see, this is the data that the, the component receives. They pass and at the bottom, you see that HTML with some capitals, languages, currencies and, and bordering countries for now is just empty. For now, as I said, it's just a view, but I have plans for it later. So now what I want to do is I want to press view. 
and I want this to be the country that I clicked view on. And I also want it to be the only thing that I see. And I also want the contents of this to be the contents of the country that I select. So how would we approach something like this? Well, we can use something like React Router. React Router is the routing mechanisms. As you can see at the top, we have some routes in this URL, for example. ReactTraining.com has its own routes and we can remove some of it. And we want to implement the same routing mechanism. By using the React Router, we can do that. So let's see how would we approach this. So first of all, based on this guide, we need to install a package that is called React Router DOM. We do just basic npm install. And in an essence, we have now a new package in our package.json called React Router DOM and we can use it to route our things. Let's execute start script again. And to use it, I just import it. And let's import it in the app component. Only thing we need is the browser router. And let's wrap our whole application in this router. We could wrap it in countries, but I prefer to do it at the root level so that the whole application has the access to this router. Now we have router and then we have routes. Let's take this import again into my countries component. And let's make two paths, the default path slash and then the path with details. We just wrap our components within this route. And now I have no component here because I'm at the root. And if I type slash details, I will get my component, but the list component is here because we need an exact match. Because this route applies to anything, what I need to do is to type exact in order to make this component the only component that we see. But we will not use it like that because I want each country to have its unique route and what we can use as route is when we look in our console log, we can use something like um, alpha3 code as our route, be it like this. We get nothing here for now because no routes are matching. The only thing that we are getting is this. But if I put it manually, you can see slash afg is our country. So what we can do here is take all our countries and map it. And we use our alpha3 code as our path. And the data would be just country. And let's not forget our key. And now we actually have paths for our countries. Let's type slash afg and we get nothing. Because we forgot to put slash. We can do it right here. And now this will fix the issue. So right now I have one route for one country. So we can switch routes. But now we need to implement the switch mechanism because right now the button does nothing. So let's implement some routing in our country list component. Our callback is now. We need to modify that. First of all, we need to wrap our country list component within this function 
that is available through us to React Router package. Let's import it. And because I did that, I have access to my routing history. So I can make a function right here that will do something like this. It will take a history that we just got because we used with router. I can push a new value to this history. And this history will be identical to our alpha 3 code that we get from our country. Let's see if it will work. And now it works. And now every route is different country. So now by exporting our component within this function, we have the access to this dot props dot history. And what history is basically doing, storing the React router history. And we can modify it and we basically modify our route. So right now we can go to country, but we cannot go back to our list view. We should work on that. So what I'm using here is the link that I also get from React Router DOM. Now the link is just basic A tag. Instead of writing ref that we do with the, our A tag, we just write it to. Now this link component here is available to us through our React Router DOM package. And what it does, it's in HTML, it looks the same as our A tag, but here, instead of jumping to the next page, we switch routes. So by writing two equals slash, we have an A tag that goes to our root route. And the difference between the link and the A tag is that A tag jumps to our new route, but link tag, it switches it. So instead of opening new page and jumping to it, we switch it, but the HTML looks the same. Now the second thing that is really interesting, right now it works without any issues. Now the problem is when we host this website somewhere else, our backend needs to make 200 routes for each country and that is insane. And what we could do is we can take our index.html and when we build our project, we can make a copy of it, rename it to 404.html and now when I make the request to slash anything else, the server says, well, I don't have anything here. So let's return 404. So let's return 404 instead of my index or some other things. And now this is 404 HTML is the perfect copy of our index HTML and the routing takes all the care. So bear that in mind, if you want to deploy this in GitHub pages or somewhere else, make copy of index.html, name it to 404, and now your routing will work. Let's continue from here. Um, we have no bordering countries. Right now it says this country has zero bordering countries because we have an empty list here. This right here is required so we can use props in our constructor. You will see that in a bit how that plays out. This props right here is so that I can use these props in my constructor. Without this, I could not access props that I give here. And I give data here, for example, and I also give all the countries. All the countries are required so I can find my matching borders. Let's look at the data. The problem is that the bordering countries of my selected countries are all abbreviations, but I want the full names. That means I need to parse the list of all countries and find the matching borders with the, my alpha 3 code, because right here I have alpha 3 codes. That is also the reason why I'm passing all the countries to my country details component. Let's write small function here. So I wrote the function that just basically iterates through all countries and finds the matching countries. If the border is included, then I push it to borders. I push it as an object with the name and alpha 3 code. And then if my borders is the same length as our data borders, then it breaks the loop. 
basic javascript let's initialize it and then we have an error cannot read property of all countries because we are trying to access props in our constructor what we need to do to have access to our props in our constructor because this function what it does it just copy pastes it here so we need to type it props here and props here so we can access them this is just react related stuff so let's check what we have right here so right now we have four objects that means we successfully initialize it and i need to display them here right now i just return null so what i did here i just used link what we saw previously it's just an a tag And here we get our links. To make them separated, I will use a little trick. Now we have a comma. Let's style them differently. And right now we can use it to access different countries. And when we go back, we go back. So let's see what we have done with the routing. We have a route that has country list component that is root route. So it must be exact match of this route. Yes. Only on slash we will get our component. Then we made a lot of more routes. And in country details, we display details of our country. And here we have buttons. And that's pretty much it. In our country utils, we have a sort functions that just modify our state and then load more button that loads more countries and in our country list it's uh, for now it's just basic view that has load more countries button and i made small mistake here this button would not work because i forgot to pass it as props And let's use it from props. And now it should work. So let's implement missing features. Right now we have this country list component that sort of acts as a view. It has no state, it just renders stuff. And what I want to do, I want to animate it. But first, let's talk how React works. As you can see, this diagram shows the life cycle of the class component that we have. We have three distinctive phases. We have mounting, updating, and unmounting. And you can see when we mount the component, the first thing that comes is our constructor. Then we get something like get derived state from props. This is just a function that we can access because we extend the React component class. And we need to put static before this function and what this function gives us it gives us props because we get the data we get the buttons it is just the lifecycle method that automatically fires then we have a render function and after that we have a component did mount function the component did mount does not require static and we can use it because we have extends react component. Let's see what we get here. And we have component did mount. So those functions fire automatically because we override them. And based on this diagram, we have them as a life cycles. And now let's look at our update phase. How do we trigger updates? Well, we trigger them by receiving new props, by setting state or by forcing update. Remember, I told you that the force update is a bad function. And here's the explanation. As you can see, it skips should component update. And should component update is another method that you can control. Let's implement it. And you can return here true or false if you want to re-render or not re-render the component. As you can see here, should component update decides if the render should happen or not. And force update just skips that. 
After that we have component did update. Component did mount fires only once. Component did update fires after every render. And component will unmount is the last function that is called. Fires, for example, when we switch between components, let's see in practice. And when I press view, my component is unmounting. The very last function that is executed is that the component will unmount. Fire. Really important for a feature. So let's implement the feature that I have in mind. So right now on component will mount, I have some timeout that will modify my state after 0 milliseconds. And I can use my state to modify my class in my div. I can say something like if the component is mounted, you have this class. If the component is not mounted, you have no class. Let's see how it works in HTML. Sorry, I have a warning here. It should be component did mount and not the component will mount. Let's see. Now our div has country list visible class. But the very first render does not have country list visible class. And because of that, I can make some animations. For example, I can make a CSS animation. That is one second long. So right now you can see every time I reload the page, you have this fade in effect. Let's make that difference more pronounced. And here we have nice slow fade. And if I go to view and go back, again this fade will happen because of mounting and unmounting. We could not do that with just setting our country list visible class because of the way the CSS works. So for example, let's have country list visible by default. Let's make it so that we always have this class. The class is here, but we get no animation because of the way the CSS works. And that's the reason I set timeout to zero so that it will proc after some delay. So we have a last error to fix. You notice that I store my timeout ID inside this variable. The reason that I'm doing that is because if I set my timeout too long, 5 seconds for example, and I switch components really fast, and my component did unmount, but the timeout is still going, and when the timeout is finished, we get an error, because the component no longer exists, and it wants to modify its state. And my set state tries to set state. For that reason, we will use component will unmount to clear our timeout. And we will no longer get this error. Let's make it a two second timeout. Let's reload and press view. And after two seconds, no error to be found. Because timeout is no longer fired. Really interesting stuff, and that way we can animate our components. Oh, sorry, it fades out because I need to change it here. And now it fades in. We can animate everything we want. And we can make very complex animations because we know how React works and how it lifecycle and how it lifecycle works. So let's recap. The resource for this one is here. And you can toggle this. So three stages. Mounting, updating, and unmounting, it's really complex stuff and you can really do a lot with this. If you know how React works, you can make a lot of cool stuff. So let's recap everything that we did. We did a create React app that automatically installs our dependencies and we saw that we don't really start in AppJS. AppJS is imported in index.js and then it hooks here. That's what we saw. Then we have two different types. We have components and views. Views are just renders that render stuff. 
not really much about them. It's just basic copy paste. And then we have components, something that has state and something that extends our React component, which is really handy because we want to use those life cycles. We're extending the component because we want to get into React's life cycle. And this is the React's life cycle. We have state where we can store stuff and then we can, as we see in our utils, we can set state and have a render function. And we, we also talk a little bit about uh, project organization. We have nice organized project. We have our, for example, in our countries, we have our basic stuff where we store, we have state constructor and render. Then we have utils where we have different functions that will be used by us. Then we have JSON where we store text, really nice feature. And then we have CSS. So that's about the project organization. And the last missing feature that I want to show the last little trick we see here, for example, in our app.js, we have, because we make everything a folder, we have country slash countries. Well, we can change that by doing something like countries.js and now I don't need to say the countries twice, sorry, like this and it will think will work here. I usually do this in every component so that I don't have to write countries slash countries for importing it. But it's a little trick for you and yeah, well, about config, we can store it anywhere we want. It's a thing of preference. I can store it in a root. I can store it in another folder and we get our API and we have load all. Our sort functions, can utils, we have sort alphabetically and sort numerically where we modify our state. We have our set state callback function, remember the discussion. And then we also have our React router where we have browser router. We have routes and we make 100, 200 routes. And it's important that our country list has this wrapper right here with router that allows us to make something like this history push. We have links this from React Router. React Router DOM gives us access to many things like browser router and then the links are just an ATEX and yeah, that's the whole application.